from Down Under. Um, just as an aside, it's 20 degrees here, um, and I'm in my shirt sleeves. Uh, we're two weeks into winter, uh, and the uh, average uh, maximum temperature for this time of year is, is uh, 14 degrees. Anyway, uh, I want to make sense of some of the events um, uh, surrounding this attack on, I think it's two oil tankers uh, in the Gulf of Oman, uh, close to Iran. Um, I first heard about this just as I was about ready to retire last night. But when I heard, after I heard the news about the attack, possibly by torpedo, as I was kind of going into sleep, I had a dream or a vision of airstrikes against Iran uh, while Japan's Prime Minister Abe was still in uh, Tehran. Um, and I realised on waking up that this was not so far from the actual truth. Um, Abe is in Iran. Uh, he's trying to act as a mediator. Uh, and one of the ships, at least, uh, is being described as uh, Japan-related. So it's uh, um, not really unrealistic to assume that whoever did this attack was at least in part a warning to uh, uh, to Japan for daring to talk uh, to the Iranians and to uh, so-called break the unilateral uh, sanctions that have been announced um, by the Americans which they are foisting on the entire world. And I noticed uh, within a short time period of time that others seem to think the same. And I'll leave uh, links to videos, uh, one from uh, RT America, from a, 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 a former, I think he's a CIA analyst, and then the other one is from Stephen Benoon of uh, Israeli News in the description box below, because they were of a very similar opinion about this to me. Well, only hours have gone by, and the Saudis are already blaming the Houthis. Oh, wait a minute. No, sorry. This is a different... Sorry, I just interspersed this uh, because, uh, yeah, Iran's foreign ministers labelled the reported attack on two Japan-related oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman as suspicious, occurring just as... Japanese uh, Prime Minister Abe came to Tehran for major talks, expressing his misgivings on uh, Twitter. Zawad Zarif announced that the incidental incidents on the two vessels on Thursday, one of which had been reportedly struck by a torpedo, had occurred as Abe sat down for extensive and friendly discussions with uh, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khamenei. And the uh, tweet says, reported attacks on Japan-related tankers occurred while Prime Minister Abe was meeting with Ayatollah Khamenei for extensive and friendly talks. Suspicious doesn't begin to describe what likely transpired this morning. Iran's proposed regional dialogue forum is imperative. So here yeah, uh, there's that. And um, here we are. I'll back to the Saudis. The Saudis are already uh, blaming uh, the uh, Houthis in um, in Yemen. And I'll come back and uh, comment briefly on this in a little while. Um, but already the Americans are out blaming the Iranians. Let's just listen to Mike Pompeo. I, I won't bother with uh, the full uh, two minutes, I don't think. Uh, I'm not really that interested in hearing from this man. It is the assessment of the United States government that the Islamic Republic of Iran is responsible for the attacks that occurred in the Gulf of Oman today. 
This assessment is based on intelligence, the weapons used, the level of expertise needed to execute the operation, recent similar Iranian attacks on shipping, and the fact that no proxy group operating in the area has the resources and proficiency to act with such a high degree of sophistication. Okay, that's enough from Mike Pompeo, I think. Um, so, um, yeah, the response from the uh, always Trump um, uh, crowd, uh, wait a minute, yeah, is, is, um, is as schizophrenic as usual. This came from uh, AMTV, uh, Christopher Green, and uh, I've forgotten the other guy's name, and the headline, oh, sorry, uh, no, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, their headline is Iran Torpedo US Linked Ships Major Military Response Imminent. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, we know that they weren't US linked ships, they were Japanese linked ships, uh, and they were ready to either uh, carry oil uh, you know, from Iran. And uh, there's not a skerrick of evidence, less than a skerrick of evidence that Iran torpedoed them. But, and yet they, they, they go in and, you know, it's, it's very, very schizophrenic. And then the same is true with uh, Hal Turner. Hal Turner I've sort of relied on. I, I overlook his extreme right-wing biases because sometimes on these things he can be useful. He has useful intelligence uh, to bring to the table, but on this he is uh, completely off the reservation because this is what he's telling his people. Covert intelligence, subscribers only, the evidence is in. Um, and uh, basically he's just saying a Pentagon official says the evidence now shows conclusively that the, uh, that the uh, IRGC, that, that, that's the Revolutionary Guards, is responsible for today's tanker attacks in the Gulf of Oman. Um, the US Navy made safe and then recovered an unexploded limpet mine on the vessels. The mine has been examined and was confirmed by Iranian. Even they know the bat. They even know the batch. So, yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. All of this reminds me very much of the... Uh, quality of intelligence, uh, false intelligence, which uh, uh, came from presumably very similar sources that Hal Turner is using, um, that led us into the, um, uh, the war in Iraq, and we all know about that. So he doesn't provide a skerrick of evidence, which often he does, I have to say, and he blames the Iranians. So there we are. So, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave the, um, the uh, link to this in the description box below because I think it's really worth listening to. Uh, I've been listening to a discussion between the two Alexanders. It's Alexander Mercurius and Alexander Christoforo of the Duran. And their take on all of this was so spot on, I thought, that I'm going to slightly take their information and kind of rehash it, hash it. So I'll leave a link to the video in the description box below. So um, Alexander Mercurius points out um, that um, well, it's likely we don't know that it was um, uh, hit with a torpedo. And he says surface torpedoes are not used with attacks these days, uh, with the change in technology. Um, they're more associated with submarines. Missiles are more frequently used these days. So it appears uh, I'm not very good on the technical side. I have to take what other people say, that it um, was not a missile attack, but it was a, a, a torpedo attack. And that... Um, implies the use of a submarine, and that in turn implies a state actor, and one for various reasons other than Iran. 
So if it was a submarine attack, that limits the number of suspects. Uh, su uh, subs can be detected fairly accurately. They have to go to the come up to the surface. They can't stay forever under underwater. They have to go into ports and so forth. So intelligence agencies such as the FSB of Russia and so forth are likely to be able to identify where the attack is coming from. Um, and they pointed out there would also be forensic evidence uh, from the damage done, uh, debris from the torpedoes or the mines, etc. Um, so, and uh, um, they point out that even Bloomberg, not exactly the most uh, reliable source on, on, on geopolitical things, has pointed out that the idea of an attack by Iran makes zero sense uh, given that Abe is in the country and negotiations are at a sensitive stage. Iran wants to trade its oil and Japan, along with other countries, wants to buy it. But Japan, of course, is under uh, American pressure from the sanctions. So what does um, uh, Bloomberg say? There's another group that will benefit from the incident, the people who want to see the US step up its campaign against Iran and move from an economic war to a military one. There are plenty of those, both in the US and among the allies in the Persian Gulf and wider Middle East regions. Correct. The timing of the attack also raises questions. They come as Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is visiting Tehran with the blessing of Trump. On Wednesday, Abe urged Tehran to avoid conflict at all costs and pledged to do his utmost to ease tensions. The tankers damaged on Thursday were carrying cargoes related to Japan. Hiroshiko Seiko, Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry, said on the ministry's Twitter feed. A day earlier, Iran freed a US resident imprisoned on espionage charges. I didn't know that. This would seem a very clumsy timing from a country seeing the first tangible signs of any easing of the crippling sanctions imposed by the Americans, but it is absolutely understandable if you're someone whose ultimate goal is to derail any easing of tensions between the two nations and to affect regime change in Tehran. Whoever is behind the attacks is no friend of Iran. And I would say that is absolutely 100% accurate. So we have to look at Kui Bono, who is to benefit and what their motivations might be. So it comes down to the old uh, motive and opportunity. Why, as uh, Bloomberg points out, would the Iranians want to choke off the Gulf in such a reckless manner? On the other hand, Saudi Arabia has a known propensity to violence. It is a well-known and strong supporter of war against Iran and is actually pushing, with it, uh, pushing for it along with their newfound ally um, uh, Bibi Netanyahu of Israel. So quite simply, Prince Salman is a hothead. And this is demonstrated by, well, I mean, <laughs> you, you couldn't even begin to count the ways, but essentially by um, the, the, the Saudi kidnapping of the Lebanese prime minister, remember that? And the coup against the princes, where they were all kept in a luxury hotel and beaten uh, until they gave up their money. And then by the gruesome... Uh, murder of Khashoggi, and also by their conduct um, against uh, Yemen. So um, we have, I'm just going to pop that down, wait a bit. Oh, yeah, no, I don't have that. Uh, uh, I was going to have a slide, the uh, Saudi ac accusation uh, against um against Iran, but I'll put that in the uh, description box below. 
It's an article from Zero Hedge. So accusations came pouring out of Saudi Arabia within hours, blaming the Houthis of Yemen for the attack. Alexander Mikuris points out that there is no evidence that the Houthis are proxies of Iran. Uh, they get sympathy and support. And besides which, um, there's a full, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, blockade of, 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 of Yemen by the, by the Saudis. So if it was the Houthis um, who have been able to recently attack uh, Saudi airports and have, uh, one would expect them to say so openly. After all, they're quite open about claiming credit for their attacks on Saudi Arabia. But how do they have the capability to carry out a sophisticated attack of this nature. They don't. For a start, they're blockaded within Yemen itself, and they certainly don't have any submarines, and they probably don't have the trained personnel to carry out this sort of uh, attack. So we have to look a little bit further at who has the motive and opportunity. So uh, apart from Saudi Arabia, of course, uh, the first nation that is usually mentioned, uh, and it's a real possibility, is Israel. They have the capability, even more capability than Saudi Arabia. They have the submarines, and they also have a history of engaging in provocations of this sort. And they desperately want uh, America to go to war with Iran. So as for the United States, um, it's very divided and there must be many people in the Pentagon who would be horrified by the prospect of war with Iran and I don't think anyone really believes that Trump himself um, uh, wants, wants this war uh, but he is captive to the uh, to the neocons, the Pompeo and and, uh, and and John Bolton and their and their ilk. Uh, so to say that there's no prospect of war, I mean this is obvious, is is complacent. People can always be talked into war. This is this is um, uh, Alexander Mercura speaking. Pompeo, Bolton and the neocons have so much investment in facing down Iran that they can't give up. So Mercurius was of the opinion that we might not see a direct attack, and uh, but we might possibly see airstrikes with the risk that they uh, ramped up. He envisages what he calls slow walking with a growing list of provocations each more serious than the one before along with threats to, uh, to respond with action if they persist in their actions um, while um, MBS the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and Bibi Netanyahu will openly call for war with Iran Trump no he will, apart from anything else, have half a mind, at least half a mind, on the 2020 elections. And really, how much control does he have anyway? Um, it's very difficult to see Trump having what it takes uh, to face down the extremists, and it seems about the most he can do is take to Twitter. As for the others, the Europeans don't want war. They support the, uh, the, the, the agreement with Iran so that they can import oil and gas. And yet they have extremely little clout because they've already shown their weakness. And Britain is divided. The Tories are divided. But the dominant part of the Tories, uh, led by uh, Boris Johnson, possibly the next leader, would instinctively uh, support the US in anything that they do, 
or rather they support the, uh, the US neocons. Um, the Russians, the Kuris says, will be engaged in active diplomacy and will use its good relationships with both Saudi Arabia and Israel to make their position against war clear. Uh, so you won't be hearing any um, any statements from the Russians that would uh, tend to uh, inflame this situation. Uh, they'll be wanting to dampen it down. In the case of war, if it, if it breaks out, China and also Russia will almost definitely try to act as a mediator to stop it, but not get um, directly involved. However, if the war escalates with a full frontal attack by the Americans, the Russians would support Iran. Generally, I'm not a, a fan of this sort of speculation, but I think that this is pretty, pretty informed speculation myself. Russia has direct routes to Iran through the Caspian Sea and Central Asia, and China has the same. And both China and Russia will be wanting to support their own interests in Iran. As to where this could go, um, uh, Makura says that uh, uh, if this really goes turns to custard, a rise to $250 a barrel um, in oil if there's a blockage of the Gulf of Hormuz and, and war, that's what's being uh, talked about. So that would be absolutely devastating for the world economy. And it's known, this is peak oil speaking, that the Saudis need at least $85, according to Alexander Makuris, to even balance their books. So they need higher uh, oil prices and the, and, the, and the rise in oil prices will, will be suiting them. The Russians, on the other hand, it's been calculated, need only uh, $40 and possibly even less than that. That's much too low a price for the Saudis because they have a, a fixed exchange rate, whereas the Russians use a, a floating exchange rate, which allows them to respond to the situation far more flexibly. Uh, now, the United States, uh, of course, he says it's a very diversified economy, but it would benefit from a higher oil price, uh, especially uh, with the shale oil, which is uh, kind of not making a profit at all. Um, but, you know, large parts of America, including Trump's people, have no interest whatsoever in higher oil prices. And Trump, it seems, has been able to keep them keep them down uh, so parts of the US would not want a, a higher oil price and certainly Europe China Japan those countries that are dependent on the oil from uh, Iran Saudi Arabia wherever do not want higher oil prices that's devastating for them So there are no statements yet, uh, as I'm making this, that I'm aware of, from either Trump nor Russia at, at the present. Trump hasn't um, gone as far as I'm aware, although I didn't check before recording this. I, he hasn't taken to Twitter, and there's no statements from Russia. So as, as Makura said, the fine phone lines will be hot, and the Russians will be doing a lot of talking in private, so you'll be getting no statements from them that might uh, inflame the situation. Whereas with Trump, when he says nothing, it's often a bad sign. Um, if he doesn't take immediately to Twitter, he says nothing. People start to assume that things have uh, blown over, but as so often, uh, they don't. So, uh, wait a minute, uh, I haven't got a slide to show, but it doesn't matter. I'll, 
I'll post these uh, below. These are the latest uh, headlines um, about America's uh, response. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in the links below. So beyond this, um, I have little idea where this is going to go, but we'll be watching it very closely. And the very least that I can say is we're living in extremely dangerous times. So that's enough from me. This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Dana.